revelation came with the urethral injury comes with the two main complaints one is blood at the meters and inability to pass urine so that summarizes everything okay so whenever you have a patient who is not able to pass urine the patient is having a severe desire to pass urine the patient is having a severe pain in the suprapubic region but the patient is not able to pass urine and maybe in the clinical scenario if at all the patient is having blood at the meters you suspect a urethral injury okay now here do not try to catheterize this particular patient why not why you should not try to catheterize this patient because if you try to catheterize this particular patient you might convert convert a partial injury to a complete injury are you able to understand this particular point so you might convert a partial injury to a complete injury and that is the reason why you should not try to catheterize this particular patient so what you need to do you need to perform a retrograde urethrogram now we will cover about this retrograde we have already covered about the retrograde urethrogram in the other section so you can have a look at it we have talked about in detail about the rgu and the mcug but here what you are going to perform is a retrograde urethrogram and when you perform a retrograde urethrogram what are you going to find you are going to find that whether the urethral injury is present or not so if at all when you perform a retrograde urethrogram if at all the dry dye extravasates out of the urethra it basically tells you that the patient is suffering from a urethral injury but if at all the dye doesn't extravasate from the urethra then what so this happens sometimes okay what happens after the trauma after the traffic accident the patient is in a severe state of shock and the sphincter muscles are very very tightly kind of close shut and the patient is not able to pass urine because they are not able to relax that particular external sphincter or internal sphincter so in this particular scenario if at all the dye reaches to the urinary bladder and there is no extravasation of the contrast in this particular scenario you are rest assured that the urethra is normal now you can pass a catheter and once you pass a catheter yeah you can send the patient home call the patient after let's say a couple of days and yeah that is how you can kind of manage this particular patient okay so i'll just summarize it again when the patient comes to you and the patient is having a severe desire to pass urine but the patient is not able to pass urine and the patient is having a severe superior pubic pain and all those particular things in this particular scenario do not try to catheterize because you might end up converting a partial injury into a complete injury in this particular scenario do a rgu that is a retrograde urethrogram that is what is going to tell you whether the urethral injury is present or not present based on the extravasation of the dye if the urethral injury is not present just go ahead pass a catheter and you can send the patient home but if at all the extravasation of the dye is kind of present in that particular scenario you have to take a proper history talk to a patient and based on a couple of things you need to distinguish between the anterior and the posterior urethral injury okay now how do you do that okay okay so before we talk about this let us understand about the parts of the urethra probably you already know this but yeah let's kind of cover it again so what do you have this is what is your urinary bladder and what do you have this is what is your prostatic urethra okay so this particular part is your prostatic urethra then you have a membranous urethra over here then you have a membranous urethra then you have a bulbar urethra and then you have a penile urethra okay, i'll draw it for you okay so what do you have this is what is a urinary bladder from the urinary bladder what comes out is a prostatic urethra this particular prostatic urethra enters into the urogenital diaphragm where does it enter it enters into the urogenital diaphragm and this particular so what do you have you have the urinary bladder then you have a prostatic urethra and then you have a membranous urethra post membranous urethra what you have is a bulbar urethra and from here what you have is a penile urethra here is your urogenital diaphragm okay i hope you are able to understand this particular point this is what is a urinary bladder this is your prostatic urethra this inside your urogenital diaphragm that is your membranous urethra then you have a bulbar urethra and this is what is your penile urethra okay now this is the parts of the urethra so either the posterior urethra can be injured which includes your prostatic urethra or membranous urethra or the bulbar or the penile urethra can be injured which are the parts of your anterior urethra the mechanism and everything is kind of a bit different okay now okay so either the posterior urethra can get injured ruptured at the membranous urethra that can happen or what can happen is the rupture of the anterior urethra that is at the bulbous portion of the urethra okay 
Now, we'll come back to these particular images again, but yeah, let's try to understand this. So we have covered this a couple of times, but what are the common findings of the patients with the urethral injury? It doesn't matter whether it is an anterior or the posterior urethral injury in both these particular patients. What are the common findings? The patient is going to have a severe urge to pass urine, but the patient will not be able to pass urine. That is why the desire is there, but the patient is not able to pass urine because the urethra is kind of disrupted. And at the same time, when you examine these particular patients, you are going to have a palpable bladder. So these are the common findings. Okay. Now, what are the findings which are uncommon and what will help you understand whether it is an anterior or the posterior urethral injury? So the posterior urethral injury is usually associated with the pelvic fracture. Now, I hope you remember this. Okay. If you have watched about uh, the bladder trauma, in the bladder trauma, the extra peritoneal bladder rupture was the one which was associated with the pelvic urethra and that makes sense. If at all there is an extra peritoneal bladder rupture, the posterior urethra is quite near to that and that is why they are associated with each other sometimes. So as you can see over here, the posterior urethral injury is associated with the extra peritoneal bladder rupture. Okay. If at all there is an injury to the posterior urethra, what is going to happen? The urine is going to seep up into the deep perineal pouch. I hope you are able to understand this particular point. Okay. So what is going to happen? The urine is going to seep out into the deep perineal pouch. Okay. So that is what is going to happen in these particular patients. The urine is going to seep out into the deep perineal pouch. Okay. So yeah, that is what is your urine is basically leaking out over here. And that is what is your deep perineal pouch. Okay. Okay. So this leads to the deep perineal hematoma. Okay. So what is happening over here in the posterior urethral injury? What you have is a deep perineal hematoma. Understood? Now, what about the prostate? So the prostate in these particular patients is a high riding prostate. Okay. So what do you have? You have a high riding prostate in these particular patients. What do you understand by the high riding prostate? As you come over here, as you see over here, that is the prostate is basically anchored to the urogenital diaphragm. Okay, so what is happening? The prostate is anchored to the urogenital diaphragm. And if at all this particular prostate gets disrupted from here, that particular prostate is going to go up. And that is what is called the high riding prostate. Are you able to understand this point? So the thing which is allowing this particular prostate to be attached to the urogenital diaphragm is that communication with the membranous urethra. But if at all that connection with the membranous urethra is lost, this particular prostate will be pulled up and that is what is called as a high riding prostate and this is also referred to as a Wehrmuten sign. Have you ever heard?